born uh, not on Christmas and not on New Year's, but somewhere in between. Thank you for giving us some time. Uh, welcome. Are you ready to rock and roll? Yes, we are. Uh, a, a couple quick questions. Dan Hartman, Rick Derringer, was it a lot of fun with those boys? Oh, absolutely. You know, Dan uh, went on to do many great things after at the Edgar Winter yeah. Band, and uh, Rick. And I just uh, did the Ringo Starr tour wow. this summer together, uh, which is my third time having done it. But Rick and I play, you know, probably 15 or 20 shows a year together. I just did a, a, a cruise, the blues cruise, with my brother Johnny. Uh -huh. So we're we're all, you know, we're all part of one big happy family that that uh, stays in touch and, and plays a lot together. You know what's interesting about uh, Edgar Winter music is that it's it's pop, it's jazz, it's rock and roll, it's funk, it's R and B, it's country. You were a child protege musician, so where do you think your music lies? It, because it is in American history. Well, part of what I've tried to do throughout my career is to broaden musical horizons and make people aware of all the music uh, sure. that that is out there. And uh, my brother Johnny, of course, is is uh, is the the blues man of the family. And you know, I'm primarily thought of as a rocker. I think. Uh, Probably because of Frankenstein being such a heavy song and the, uh, it's such a dynamic image. I happen to be the first guy to get the idea of putting a strap on the keyboard and therefore people also tend to think of me mostly as a keyboard player whereas actually I, I consider my main instrument to be alto sax. Right. But uh, you know my dad played uh, alto sax in a swing band in his youth. He played guitar and banjo. My mother played classical piano and uh, you know, I, I just have always felt that, uh, uh, you know, there's, uh, the record companies really want you to, to be monodimensional, to do sure. one thing. They want you to be uh, identifiable as, say, a country person or a blues person or a rock person. That gives them a, a target, a, a target market. market, you know. Right. And to me, that's, that's really like, uh, that's very much like uh, musical segregation and, and and I've just been really which opposed to that which is not a good thing I you know I, I love all kinds of music and all kinds of cultures and and I think it's all equally uh, they're they're all equally valid forms and, and uh, therefore I'm never gonna uh, be, uh, you know, be imprisoned uh, yeah in one one niche there you got it that's it so listen on Frankenstein ba -dum -bum 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 -bum. Yeah. hey you put the strap on the keyboard Yes, I do. You wanted to move around on stage, is that right? Ed? That's absolutely right. I, I got so frustrated being stuck behind a <laughs> massive bank of keyboards, and you know nobody can see what you're doing. You've got like one foot on a volume pedal and another one on a sustain, and uh, you know I said, why do the guitar players get to have all That's the fun? Right. I want to get out there and boogie. So you know I happened to be walking through the music store that, uh, and saw these new instruments, synthesizers, and uh, I said, wow, this thing looks uh, like you could just put a strap on. It and uh, play it like a guitar, which is exactly what I proceeded to do, and the rest, as they say, is history. You are responsible for all those keyboard players now strutting on the stage yeah. with that axe. I am indeed. Yes, you yeah. are. Well, listen, uh, thank you so much for your time. I know you got to do some vocal exercises. You're entirely and, welcome. And maybe we can go out and do a little. Da -da 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 -da. Are you ready for the monster? <laughs> all right. I love Thunder Valley. Oh,